the IBM Model M. I don't think this keyboard needs an introduction to most keyboard enthusiasts. It's an absolute classic, the granddaddy of all modern keyboards. But still, let's do a quick overview. This keyboard was introduced in 1985 and has revolutionized keyboards forever. Its layout has been the de facto standard ever since and it has gained legendary status. It has a thick PVC case and die sublimated PVT keycaps, therefore the entirety of the keyboard will not be prone to yellowing except for the spacebar, which is made out of ABS plastic. Also the keycaps are double stacked on the earlier models, so that means you get two different pieces joined together. This 1992 model weighs 2 kilograms, but some older models can weigh up to 2.5 kilograms. Later Lexmark models have lost quite a bit of weight, but still remain good quality. Buckling spring switches, or more commonly referred to as catastrophically buckling compression column switch and actuator, have a fairly stiff weighting and nice smooth action. The click is satisfying, and since the spring buckling is what causes not only the click, but also the actuation, the two are perfectly in sync. Which is something that actually cannot be said for a lot of other mechanical keyboards. It is an absolute joy to type on it, however I'd like to bring up a couple points which have steered me away from purchasing one for the longest time and makes me consider this keyboard a little overrated. Now don't get me wrong, this is still an amazing keyboard, but there are a couple problems I'd like to address. The number one problem is definitely the price. I know this keyboard is great, but it is not perfect nor is it rare. IBM manufactured millions of these, Yet somehow you'd be hard pressed to find one in good condition for under $100. Somehow the market value of these keyboards are just insanely unrealistic. We're talking about 20 to sometimes over 30 year old keyboard. And while the build quality of these keyboards is outstanding, they were simply not designed to last for over a quarter of a century. This sort of leads me into my second problem with the keyboard, which is maintenance. Not only do the springs get tired over this many years, but the keyboard has a critical issue which plagues all models and will have to be dealt with sooner or later. I'm of course talking about the plastic rivets holding the barrel plate to the metal backplate. These break off over time and every keyboard will eventually need to be fully bolt modded in order for them to be functional for a while longer. The third problem, which is not really that big of a deal, sort of ties in with the first two problems mentioned. This keyboard is a membrane keyboard. Now I'm not talking about rubber domes, which is what most people immediately think of, but these plastic sheets that contain the keyboard's matrix. These are fragile and can get damaged easily, makes the keyboard absolutely not waterproof. Well, if you spill your drink into an average PCB-based individual switch unit keyboard, you can pretty much take it to the sink, wash it out, let it dry, and it will be back up and running. The same cannot be said of this keyboard. If anything were to happen to the membrane, you will have to completely disassemble the keyboard, which means using 7 32nd inch hex nut drivers, and also breaking off the previously mentioned plastic rivets just to get access to the membrane. After that, the only way to reassemble the keyboard is to also bolt mod it. Being a membrane keyboard, it is also limited to just two key rollover. Definitely not a gaming optimized matrix either, which in combination with the stiff weighting makes it not quite optimal for gaming. So don't buy it for that. There are much better alternatives for gaming. This keyboard is meant for mainly typing. My verdict is this. If you want to use a Model M as a daily driver, I recommend checking out Unicomp, who still manufacture this keyboard for a reasonable price. However, international shipping from the US might get expensive, you're still getting a brand new Model M that will need no maintenance for quite a few years. Of course, it may not have the same quality as some of the older models once had. Again, you're getting a brand new fresh keyboard, not some old worn down one. The difference between a brand new Unicomp Model M and let's say a 30 year old Model M can be absolutely staggering. I'd leave the rest of the keyboards up to those who are just collecting and want an IBM badge Model M. I personally didn't get the Model M until about 4 years into retro mechanical keyboard collecting and honestly I thought I'd never even get one. If not for this one showing up for a really low price that I had to jump on. I paid around 50 US dollars for this unit. Some of the keyboards that have risen in popularity and price recently include the Dell 8101-102, aka the Bigfoot, on which I might make a video in the future. I think Model M's really need their price cut on the used market, but unfortunately that's not how it works. Don't worry though, if you look for long enough, you can find some really cool keyboards, even better ones than the Model M for a lower price too. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be definitely making more videos on my keyboard collection and other retro stuff as well. So stay tuned and let's go clickety-clack.